What's up, family? What's up, family? It's your boy, Urban Sports Guru. The NFL playoffs are here. Starting tomorrow at 4 o'clock. 4.30 to be exact. Damn, I remember when it was just week one. Damn, damn, damn. The season goes so fast. We love it. And now the playoffs are here. Let's get into my picks for wild card weekend. Now we have Buffalo going to Houston. Going to Houston to... Going to Houston to play the Texans. Now, y'all know how much I love Deshaun Watson. Everybody's being made, a lot is being made up about if Will Fuller plays. That's for good reason. Deshaun Watson, three years, last three years, when Will Fuller plays, his QBR goes from 64.4 to 73.3. The only other player with a higher QBR over that, that period of time is Patrick Mahomes. His quarterback rating. Goes from 89.3 to 104.3 when Will Fuller's on the field. Why? Will Fuller runs 4 3 in his sleep. The problem with Will Fuller, and y'all know I'm a Notre Dame fan, since his Notre Dame days, is staying on the field. So it's a hamstring, blew out his knee, or now it's a groin. And now he's going against a defense in Buffalo that can get after the quarterback. Y'all have heard me say this all year. I love Michelle Deshaun Watson. If they could, you can protect Deshaun Watson, you win. The problem is, I don't think they can protect him. Buffalo has a front four. Jerry Hughes, Ed Oliver, Murphy. They coming. They are coming. They got linebackers that can make plays in space. Tredavious White, great corner. The great corner to go against Hopkins. Hopkins is going to get his regardless because he doesn't need separation. You throw it anyways. Suction cups for hands. He's going to get certain catches. But having Will Fuller full strength, Will Fuller changes the game because they throw the ball down the field so much. So even if you're not going to him, it frees up Hopkins. It frees up Stills. Um, Kenny Stills is going to have to be big in this game. And frees up the running game. I just look at Buffalo's defense. Buffalo hasn't given up more than 24 points all year. All year, they haven't given up more than 24 points. And I look at Buffalo, you see a team. Houston, you see Deshaun Watson and the Musketeers. That's what I see. I see Deshaun Watson and the Musketeers. That's what I see. I see Deshaun Watson and public announcement. <laughs> That's what I see. And he's that damn good. But it comes now, playoff time. I'm going to go with the team. I, Buffalo is a team, a team that hasn't given up more than 24 points all year long. Every single game they play in is close. Every game. Every game. I say this game, every game. Yes, JJ being, being back may be something. But I'm going to take Buffalo. That's my pick. Next game, we got Tennessee against the Patriots. Now, when you look at this for on paper, talent for talent, this is a bit of a mismatch. <laughs> I mean, Patriots, talent for talent. Oh, I mean, just offensive line. Pa the Texans offensive line had three first pattern picks plus Roger Saffold. They have one of the best offensive lines in football. Patriots do not. Running backs. Do I need to go there? Receivers. This young kid Brown is better than, than anyone on the Patriots roster right now. Tight ends. Delaney Walker. You know, when does the Patriots not win a tight end battle? They always at least had Gronk. I had Gronk and Anna Hernandez. They don't have anyone next to close as being as good as Delaney Walker. So, look at defense. The one thing the Titans cannot do well is rush the quarterback. They don't. They don't. They don't rush the quarterback well. They they just don't. Damn good secondary. Linebackers are stout. But I have a hard time envisioning the Patriots. Patriots been outgunned like this before. This is. They've never been an impressive team coming off the bus. They've been outgunned like this before. The Patriots, however, Bill Belichick's such a mastermind and. Their defense has been great this year. 
Everybody's making out the, because of this last game against Miami, and I get it. Their defense was great this year, not because they have a great front seven. They don't. They have no one on the front seven that scares you. The problem is their secondary is so damn good. They leave everybody zero, zero coverage and just put 9, 10 in a box. And you're not running against us. You will not run the football against us. So maybe we don't have an individual pro bowler outside of maybe Hightower, who's a stud. They have no real individual studs like that, especially in the front four. They have no one had, yo, we need to figure out how to game plan against him. Hightower's probably the only guy. And, but the fact that they just out-scheme you in that regard. So the fact that the, the Titans, great offensive line, great running back, and run the ball the way they do. One thing, it's kind of like Floyd Mayweather in boxing. Floyd Mayweather will always say, I don't figure out what you do bad. I try to take away the one thing you do well. And that's the same thing built in the way Bill Belichick goes about his coaching. It's not about what you do bad. I try to take away the one thing you do well. So the first thing the Titans do well, they run the football. One thing he's going to do is going to take away what you do well. He's going to take away the run game. That's what Bill's going to do that. He's going to put nine in a box. Fuck eight, man. He's going to put nine in the box and dare you to throw. Now, Ryan Tenhale's been great. He's been hot. But you start throwing these exotic blitzes. Exotic blitzes are kind of blitzes that had uh, Sam Darnold seeing ghosts. Now, Ryan Tenhale isn't Sam Darnold, but can he do it enough to beat a Tom Gray? Brady, who with nobody could still make key plays. I have a hard time seeing the Patriots lose a playoff game. Even though it's just a wild card playoff game. And they're rarely in a wild card. They haven't been in a wild card in 10 years. Lose a playoff game at home, prime time. I have a hard time seeing that. I'm taking the Patriots. Um, Minnesota on the road against the 13 and 3. New Orleans Saints. And I told y'all in the beginning, the NFC is so damn loaded, we have a 13-3 and team playing in the wild card. Division leader, 13-3, and but they're in the wild card. That's how loaded the NFC is. Loaded. But now, you know, the Saints, I have a hard time. I, as talented as the Vikings are, now I'm just doing some research, on the road, their defense is loaded as it is. They get pounded. And their losses for their losses, they get pounded against the run. And you wouldn't think that would happen with a team with Linval Joseph, that linebacker crew. Everybody talks about how good the Cowboys linebackers are. Look at the linebackers they got in Minnesota. Anthony Barr, to me, is one of the best linebackers in football. Let alone Hendricks, Kendricks, whatever. They went on the road to KC, gave up a buck, buck 47. When they didn't have Patrick Mahomes and lost. Yeah, I saw it happen 200 plus against Seattle. Pounded it right down their throat. Both games against the Packers. That kid Jones went for 100 plus. That's four out of their six losses. Now they're going against the ro on the road. Now they're going on the road to New Orleans. And Alvin Kamara and the Saints O-line. You got Rhodes who they notoriously keep leaving in press coverage. He should be in cover two or cover three. They keep leaving him press coverage, making them follow, I guess, because they paid him. They say, okay, this is your job description. No, you was doing fine with him at first because you left him doing what he can do well. Now you got him following. Yes, Michael Thomas is a big physical guy. He's not going to run away from you. But Xavier Rhodes is getting torched. Let's call it what it is. I can't see it. I can't see it. I'm taking the Saints. Now, Seattle... It's going back to Philly. They went to Philly early this year, 117-9, ugly game. It's the way Seattle wins. These teams are very similar in a sense. I think Seattle has better foundation. I say they're similar because they're two teams who aren't grossly talented. I mean, Philly's more like that because of all their injuries, but not grossly talented. But quarterback play, especially with Philly late quarterback play, 
has elevated them to look better than what they really are. And particularly when I look at Seattle, the the epitome of that. I keep telling you, oh yeah, that's not the Legion of Boom anymore. And now they're relying on Jadavian Clowney to have a great game because of the great game he had against um San Fran. Who cares? That's one game. The man only has three sacks this year. I told y'all he wasn't going to do really good this year. Why? Because Seattle's defense doesn't do the exotic things with him that uh, Houston defense did. And he couldn't put up numbers playing next to J.J. Watt. Now you're playing in a defense where they just lining you up and they expecting you to rush. I knew he wasn't going to put up no numbers there. But defensively, Eagles have a front four that's stout. They're balling right now. They can get after the quarterback. Carson Wentz is balling. Russell Wilson's balling. Eagles have a better run game right now. You know, they're relying on beast mode in Seattle to basically come <laughs> come off the street. I like Seattle because I think they can get some big plays from their receivers. I think they can get the one big play that will make a difference in this game. And I'm taking Seattle. Those are my picks. Let me know what your thoughts. Let me know what you feel. It's your boy, Urban Sports Guru. And I'm out. Salute.